no ngati manawa, no ngati ruapani ki waikari mwana, ngai tu hoi e ngati kahanganu. A ngahuia, um, ngahuia is a kaupapa Māori researcher, educator, writer and presenter. Ngahuia, her groundbreaking study of Māori pre-colonial stories, ceremonies and practices regarding menstruation led to the Waikato University Master's Research Award. <coughs> Ngahuia completed her doctoral research at Waikato, examining native women's ceremonial arts in Aotearoa, Hawaii, and the two um, Turtle Island areas of Canada and North America. She is a recipient of numerous awards, including the Health Research Council, New Zealand Māori PhD Scholarship, and the uh, Sir Hugh Kafaru Auckland War Memorial uh, Museum Award. Ngahuia is committed to decolonization and the reactivation of traditional spiritualities that celebrate the divine feminine. Yeah, oh. <coughs> settle down. She has published two books, uh, Waifero, A Celebration of Womanhood and Te Awa Atua, Menstruation in the Pre-Colonial Māori World, um, which you can purchase and get signed at the break, which is after this. So Ngahuia will sign some books um, at the break coming up, as well as in the, this afternoon further on. So humai te paki paki ba Ngahuia. Tāguara ki te pōti, toko ki te au marama, ki hei mairi ora. Ko rangi kai runga ko papa, kai raro. Kia piti aro rangi aku mehi ki ngā maunga tapu, ka hura haere aku mehi ki ngā noninga kumu, ki ngā waituku ngā kiri, ki ngā tūtohu whenua ki ngā wāhi tapu, ki ngā tareiti, ki te upoko o tika, te nā kotou, te nā kotou, te nā kotou. Ngā mate kai rungi a tātou, Ko tangi a nākau atu nei ki a, ki a koutou haere ki tō tātou tīpuna kui a hine whakapau tāngata ki te pō, koutou ki a koutou tātou e kui mai nei tēnā, tēnā tātou. Tāne whakapiripiri tēnā koe, ngā kai whakahaere o tēnei hui, mihi ana ki a koutou, ki a koe whenua, tēnā koe, ki ngā kai kōrero, ki te ahi ahi nei, e mihi ana ki a koutou, a nu, holy heck, taku tino airo tērā, um, tai atu ki a koutou e rautani wha mai nei Ki rungi i te karanga o te rā, ko te mana, me te tapu o te awa atua, me te whare tangata Mauri ora, te whare tangata Nō reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ko tātou tēnā Taku kui a uh, ko panekire te maunga, ko waikare te moana Ko Ngāti Ruapani te iwi Taku ko raua ko tāwhiu au te maunga, ko rangi tāi ki te awa, ko ngā timanoa te iwi, ko ngā huia mō ki tō kōrunga, ka huri te reo, ina e nei, te reo tuarua, reira tātou. So, um, hey everyone, <laughs> it's a real, it's a real, it's a real honour to be here, and um, it's always really a really humbling experience to share the stage with Ani Mekaire, whose work, The Balance Destroyed, I think I was about 20 or 21 when I read it, and it just, it was just, it just rocked my world. It just was just, it just one of the most important works uh, that we have, The Balance Destroyed. And so uh, to share the stage with her <laughs> is, um, is, is a real, Honour, and um, and also to have uh, one of our most formidable and precious freedom fighters here with us today. That's Moana J <laughs> in the front row. Um, I'm quite intimidated. So, um, and it's no small thing. It's no small thing, given what Ani has, has talked about. 
It's no small thing for us to gather in this way to talk about the mana and tapu of the whare tangata me te awatua. It's no small thing for us as Māori women to gather to talk about um, these, you know, the, the tapu kōrero about our own bodies because of uh, the colonial history and the censorship um, and the use of violence to crush um, the knowledges and the traditions that venerate the whare tangata, the central significance of the whare tangata. Um, and it's important to um, because the thing is that we are the Modi of the people. So if we're oppressed, if Māori women are oppressed, if our mana is subordinated, it impacts on the entire iwi. If we are, if our mana is celebrated, then that impacts the entire iwi. Yeah. He wahine he whenua ngarawai te tangata. Without the land and woman, humanity would be extinguished. Yeah. So... I'm going to be talking just a little bit about uh, my master's research, Te Awa Atua, um, and my PhD, Te Ahi Tawhito, Te Ahi Tsipua, Te Ahi Nga Mahuika, and some of the, some of the kōrero that's come out of that. Um, I think one of the biggest revelations through that research process um, was the understanding that and and my and some of my teachers and some of my old people they've always said to me our society was matriarchal <laughs> and um, and I have come to see and I believe that uh, in my heart that we were that we were matriarchal if you look at our ritual histories um, men knew that their own mana was directly related, but came from the whare tangata because that's the house of their own origins in the world. And so to, um, you know, and so warriors and weaponry were named after mothers and grandmothers to celebrate their status and to um, increase their own mana and tapu. And what I've been told is that the rangatira lines come down the Kuiya side, the Aratama Wahine side, in Aotearoa as it does in other places across Polynesia. Um, so with, with uh, my master's thesis, I, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to look at how our tipuna saw menstruation um, because I didn't believe this idea that we saw the blood as being paru because of the central significance, because of our kōrero around the significance of the whare tangata. So I looked, um, I looked through karakia mō tia tia, uh, and our cosmological stories, looking for the whakapapa kōrero, looking for the origins, um, how our tipuna conceived where the blood came from, the ancient names that would unlock the ways that our tipuna saw um, the blood. And I went through the colonial ethnographic and historic accounts too to see what they wrote. And of course, the two things are very, very different. So the, the origin, the oldest of the origin stories that I, um, that I found, this was this one recorded by Nia Pia Pōhuhu, Ngāti Kahununu Tohunga, who, who talked about during the seventh cycle of Tepo, Tepo Tifa Tifa, the river of power, Tewa Atua, um, emerged as Papa Tuanuku was ripening into her power as a creatress within the poor. And so it was the blood that assured the, 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 the conception and birth of the, of the whole pantheon of Atua. So the blood that we bleed today is the same blood that birthed the pantheon of Atua. And so to understand that the blood connects us to our whānau, the Atua, 
to our atuatanga, to our creation stories. <coughs> to understand it as that, then um, if, we, if we see it today as paru, it's uh, incredibly offensive, eh? because it connects us to, to them, to our atuatanga. Yeah. According to what uh, Nepia, to his a account, Tane discovered a whole new world beyond the primordial womb of the four by riding out um, of Te Pō into Te Ao Marama on the menstrual tide of his mother, Papa Tuanuku. So this is a depiction of that story um, by the Te Arawa artist Regan Balzia. And so ancient names, some of the ancient names for the blood are Atua, Awa Atua, and Rerenga Atua. The blood is a medium between worlds and a medium of Atua, which is why it was used across a spectrum of rites. And when I looked at those rites over and over again, it was about protection, the power of purification, the power of woman to purify, not pollute. And what's really amazing to me is that the rites and, the, and, and some of our ancient rites, we're using the blood, we're anointing the blood to purify, to clear obstructions, to clear makutsu. And the colonisers had something like that too. They, they had a medium that they used for that same purpose. And it was holy water. Holy water blessed by male priests under the authority of a, of a male sky god. We had the menstrual blood of woman. And to me, that speaks <laughs> to the difference between us. <laughs> yeah. This karakia is just, it's so beautiful because it tells us how our tipuna saw the blood. So it was, it was recorded in 1853 by Governor George Gray. E pai kanohi me here. Even the title is significant, is significant to acquire eyes if one is blinded. So this karakia was chanted at the arrival of the blood for the very first time in Menarch rites. So, te ra e hara mai rā re re kura re re toro hai, te māra mai re re mai rā re re kura re re toro hai, kā whiki te kā whikaro te kā hui, tupua nau mai ki waho, te rito rito te waiwhiro, tuputo te ora he ora, ora. The sun arising, coming forth, flying red, seeking its journey. The moon arising, coming forth, flying red, seeking its journey. One sees it dimly for the first time. Dimly visible are the company of supernatural beings. Welcome, come forward, the potential for life, the menstrual blood. Let life grow, life itself, it lives. How beautiful is that? So the blood, the symbol of the vivacity of life, of life itself, akin to the powers of the sun and the moon that move through the sky a medium of supernatural beings. A medium that assures the continuation of whānau whakapapa lines. And so when it arrived for the very first time, it was greeted with reverence and ceremony, yeah. And the interesting thing about it is that the blood represents life, but it also represents death, because it represents the death of an ancestor returning back to Papa Tuanuku. And it also represents regeneration and the promise of renewal, the cosmogonic milestones, birth, death, and renewal. Ko te whare tangata te rā. You know, the, and you see that cycle, that same cycle in the waxing and waning moon, the movement of hina, of, of hine te iwiwa each month. You see it in the seasons of the earth. She goes through her cycles from summer into autumn and winter and she's reborn again in the spring, those cosmogonic milestones are captured in the ceremony of the whare tangata, which is why that blood was used so powerfully um, in our ritual histories, 
because it could clear, could purify, could neutralise, could overwhelm Makutu and any other force because it represents those cosmogonic milestones. And here's an example. This is a beautiful one. This was composed uh, by the Tipuna Kuia Parewahaika from Tu Haurangi Te Arawa. Tēnei te waiwhero, te paheke i rarora, he whakamatara mo te hunga mākutu. Here is the blood flowing below to keep the sorcerers at a distance. <coughs> clearing, clearing and neutralising mākutu. Just like karanga on the marae atea, if there's any crap on the marae atea, the karanga will clear it. Just like if you've been to the Koronehana and you see two kuia sitting on either side of King Tu Heitia, they're sitting there, uh, and, or, and, and what's been explained to me, what they're doing, through the power of the tara, through the power of the whare tangata, is clearing, clearing any crap flying around on the marae atea. Just like when we go into the whare tipuna, we go under the pare, we go in some whare tipuna. What do you see on the doorway? What do, what do you see up there on the pare when you go under? What do you see? You see the tara. You see the tara. And you go under, and if there's any crap flying around, she will purify it because she's the doorway between worlds. She, faci she facilitates the transformation of consciousness. Yeah. And when you step through the door of the whare tipuna into the house, you're stepping through the whakawai of papatuanuku, the open legs. You step through and you're purified, and that is the role of woman, to purify and facilitate the transformation of states of consciousness. You see it over and over again in the traditional, uh, you know, in our ritual histories, the power of the blood, the power of the tara, like the ancient whakahoi rites where when we went to, warriors went to battle, they would step under the legs, they would step between the legs, crawl between the legs of woman to whakatapu, and then when they got back, they would step back again through the legs of woman to lift that tapu and whakanoa. And this is, the, this is something that Ani wrote about all those years ago. The power of Māori woman to traverse across the entire, the entire continuum of tapu and noa to move backwards and forwards. Why? Because of that ceremony of the womb, the power of birth, death and renewal. We can move fluidly across the spectrum, no problem. Yeah, no problem. One of the um, things that came up in my PhD was if the if the if if menstrual blood tiawa atua is a is a medium of whakapapa, if it's a symbol of whakapapa, um, if it's a ceremony of purification and renewal, which it is, and it's always been that. So our woman would rest uh, during that time. And you can imagine the, the significance of that in communal society. Women, women who live together, what happens? <laughs> we bleed together. So can you imagine when, we're, when Te Awatu arrives for half the population, we're taking, we're, we, when we take the time out to rest, with the support of our men folk? Who knew, who knew the central significance of the whare tangata? To, to honour it and to acknowledge it is to increase their own mana in the world. And that's why you have these, these beautiful kōrero of, of warriors and weaponry named after mothers and grandmothers. Because those warriors knew that it increased their own tapu. So in Tuhoi we have... Te tokotoru wa Paifiti, the three warriors of Paifiti. She was their mum. Um, 
in ngā toitoi a paiwhiti, the hackers and cutters, the assassins of paiwhiti. But today, one of the things, like I said, that's coming out of uh, one of the kōrero that came out of my PhD is if the blood is a medium of whakapapa that connects us to our atua, if it's a ceremony of purification and renewal, what can we release on the flow of blood each month if we work with that blood in a, in a sacred way? And some woman um, talked about if the whare tangata is, is a, is houses intergenerational trauma, then she also has the capacity to clear it and release it through the whakapapa line. So the idea of working with the blood to shed not only personal obstacles, um, but through but clearing through the whakapapa line. Yeah. This is another uh, this is another example of Te Awa Atua in our ritual history. It's a, a lament for Papaka Te Nairoa composed by Te Hiohio, the second tūkino Ngāti Tūwhare Toa, taku wai whakatahe tahe ki te kauhanga a riri, he rianga tai he rutunga patsu, te whakatahe, the waters of life. So the way that our tipuna saw the blood is in the, it's in the, it's in the names, te awa atua, te rerenga atua, atua, wai tahe, the waters of life, wai kura, the sacred precious red medium, wai orona, i kura, so this one, all in vain, was my menstrual offering at the altar to smooth the way in battle. The ocean was defied when weapons were held on high. So here we have uh, the laying of, of that precious blood to clear. Laying, that, laying the blood pre-battle at the altar in war to clear obstructions, to, to open the way, to clear any... Uh, psychic obstructions heading into battle because first and foremost battle was on the way to her it was spiritual that's why that's why when you look at our histories it's the woman that conducted the war rights they were on the battlefield they their their prophecies their rituals were used to shape the battle strategies over and over again yet today how how many of us how many of us have seen woman karakia publicly? How many of us have seen woman karakia publicly? Very few, because it's assumed that that's the role of men. But when you look at our histories, that is not the case, and it's such a rot um, that we've come to believe that. <coughs> So we go to these events, Irotui Te Ao Māori, and there's no female counterpart in the karakia. And like I said at the very beginning, the consequences of silencing the whare tangata impacts us all because we are the Māori of the people. So one of the one of the uh, quarter or two that came out of uh, my PhD was that just like so this one here ko te tangi mo tu fagararo te rangatira o taranaki ko te wai fero kia utu utu hia hei wai kana hoi ro marau tau menstrual cloth shall return as a weapon bewitching fluid for tau so here is the taking of that sacred blood to an anointing weaponry so rau tau is is the weapon the weapon hoi roa. The blood has been used to anoint the weapon and I think increase its increase its tapu, increase its modi, so it'll be even more effective. So today um, the idea that the blood as a as a raw, potent, as the fire of the womb of the mother Papa Tuanuku, as a raw, potent medium that connects us to our atua, the power, the, the, the power uh, that power to increase um, and make more potent. Um, some women today, when they bleed, the, there's a real uh, revival happening here in, in Aotearoa and, um, and in Hawaii. Um, and the people that I was with in, in Turtle Island to, to reclaim and reactivate our ancestral rights around the blood. 
And one of the court all that came out was that some women, uh, every month when they bleed, they're bleeding directly onto the whenua. And with the understanding that when they return that blood to papa, it increases her modi and feeds her modi in a time of ecological collapse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, the power of the blood to clear to clear Makutsu, to clear the way, to neutralise obstacles, all that is directly related. It's, it's a continuation of how our tipuna saw the tara, yeah. Our woman-led war parties, they led muru plundering parties, and they led them naked. How, st <laughs> how extreme! How startling. <laughs> they led them naked and their naked bodies increased the tapu of the war party. They would recite their karakia on the front line of battle and raise the frequency to the climactic point, the zenith of power, before unleashing the war party on the enemy. Their naked bodies on the front line neutralised any mākutu or crap flying around, but it also, they were the most, they were the most dangerous person on the battlefield because they embodied Hine Nui Te Pō. There's no one more formidable than that. Oh, shucks, okay, I'm running out of time. This is Ani Makaide. She called it years ago. She says, exposure of the tara is a graphic way of reminding the men of the ultimate supremacy of female strength. They're shown the pathway to life and death and are reminded that if they ignore or deny the power of female sexuality, they do, they do so at their peril. And so one of the old names for the tara is tefa tefa. Yes. She will annihilate those that transgress sacred laws. Going, so our creation story, our co cosmological stories tell us Maui and Hina Nui Te Pō, later with Hina, Hina and Kai, that, if, that, that in times of transgression of sacred laws around Whakapapa and Whanaungatanga, it is woman that will lead the restoration of balance. That's why woman led those muru plundering parties. And if you look at our, if you look at the Tino Rangatiratanga movement, you'll see that it is women that uh, that that have led those movements. Today we see it at Ihumata with Panya Newton, and I just love how um, I just find it so refreshing. Uh, that they are really uncompromising uh, in their stand to protect their sacred whenua. They won't negotiate about it. So over-negotiation, having to give, give, give. What I have um, what I've, um, seen in, in my mahi over the years is this idea um, that that in our own histories, but also around the world, the opening and closing tara is a ritual motif. She holds the power to create, destroy, bless, protect, purify, repel, renew, and facilitate a change in consciousness as what Ani uh, describes as a transitional zone, the tara, between one world and another, between te ao kiko kiko and te ao wairua. Uh, so I'm wrapping up, starting to wrap up now. To meeting a hōhaya, the historian uh, from Pariaka, um, he loved Ani's work. When I first started out uh, researching Te Awa Atua, 
10 years ago I asked him who I should go and talk to and he his his the first name off his lips was Ani. He loved the balance destroyed. And it um he said to me that because he had the kahui kararehe manuscripts um and he said that what Ani wrote there were it was it was consistent with what he found in the karakia tanga faka papa tanga kōrero. He says to me the 19th century Te Kahui Kararehe manuscript is consistently clear that the most prestigious lines of descent are those beginning from leading women of the tribe. Even when significant male ancestors are being presented, the Whakapapa returns back to that man's Aratama Wahine line of descent. The explanations or Whakapapa Tanga Kōrero were always the same. Here's an example. Ko te rangi hā tuku tuake, he ariki nui nō tēnei iwi o Taranaki. A he uri anō nō roto i te kete ngē, o tōna kui a nei o ueroa, te kete ngē being the matriarchal gene pool. The male line was never presented in any way comparable to this. This is where mana came from. This was where the tribe placed its pride, not in the man but in his kui a. That really sums up the journey, my research journey. Um, over the last few years. So I just want to close um, with a beautiful karakia, one of my favourites. Hihia te rangi, hihia te mana purutia, te ao takapaua, te ao kia hauhau rongo, kia maunga rongo, kia papatuanuku, kia rongo marairo e takoto nei. I ai. The deepest desire of the cosmos is for peace to encloak the earth and the female principle. This is about the restoration of, of balance, yeah. So kia ora tatau. thank you for having me.